Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to try and fix this Xbox One that I bought for £28 from eBay. Now it's already been opened up, it could have been looked at by various different people, I really haven't got a clue, but for £28 I think it's well worth the risk. So if you have a look here, you see it was the best offer and I put in £28 which was accepted, but if you have a look... It was only up for £30 to begin with. So it says uh, 40 Xbox One power cuts off randomly. There's not a lot of uh, description with it. It just says comes as just a console, no wires or controller. Item is 40, power cuts off randomly. Item may have other faults, fast, reliable shipping. And it was, it arrived within two days. So I'm thinking now, because it was let go so cheap, maybe someone along the line somewhere knows that possibly this might not be repairable. Hence the reason it really has just been sold at a fair price for spares or repair. Even if I can't get this one working, other ones will need things like this side bit here, this front bit. You know, there's going to be things on the inside that can be reused. I'm hoping. I hope that the, it is all in there in the inside. So I think first things first, let's turn it on. I won't bother connecting it to the TV. And let's see what it means by cuts off randomly. Does that mean like every minute? Or could it work for an hour? So let's plug it in and see what happens. So obviously I'm going to be using my equipment with it because this came with just the uh, box by itself. So I'm going to keep my hands well clear from it because obviously I do not know the background of this, do I? Plug it in, and let's see if it even turns on. So here we go. Okay, so that's good. All right, sounds a little bit noisy. Let me get a disc. It hasn't cut off yet, which is really good. takes discs in and I can hear it reading it or trying to right so far so good let's get a controller and let's see if it will pair up hold that down there I'm going to hold down the hold on Oh, it looks like these batteries have gone flat. Yeah, oh, hold on. No. Here we go. Put the sync button here. Okay, the sync button's not doing anything at the side. Right, so that sync button's definitely not working. Doesn't seem to be. Actually, I know I can feel a click. But that's not flashing there. Let's get a USB cable. Right, okay, so it's synced up. Let's see if it will keep it synced now. Yes, it will. I think it's just playing up because the batteries here must be getting low or maybe that controller's been dropped or something. Wow, okay, let's uh, connect it up to the TV and let's see what happens. So I'll start filming again in a minute. Right, I've plugged in a HDMI cable into the back of it. And it's up there, it's working. I've clicked on uh, Plants vs Zombies and you can see there that it is actually installing. Do you know what? I'm wondering whether it could be heat related. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed. I would have just presumed that this would have gone through so many different hands. Maybe I've been so scarred by the whole buying on eBay that uh, maybe this person has just had this one and it started playing up and they've sold it for next to nothing. I don't get it. But if it was just dirt in the inside and they've taken it apart, surely they would have cleaned that. Or did they try to take it apart, struggle, and then stop, you know, after they kind of like took off the back cover or something, you know, maybe they didn't have a Torx, a Torx bit to undo the, uh, the internal. Your controller batteries are low yet, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Okay, well we know the sync button's not working, so that has to be something that I need to look into. So that could be quite interesting. But the controllers are keeping sync. I mean, I know the battery's low, but look, it's wireless, and it is keeping sync. Uh, what am I going to do? 
going to do here now, well I suppose we could pause that insulation, take it apart and see how dirty it is. I mean there's a fair bit of noise coming from it. I wonder could it all be related to maybe blocked, a blocked uh, heat sink or something like that with dust, wouldn't that be amazing? Well let's stop that insulation and take it apart and we can also find out why that sink button's not working. Right, when that comes out, I'll then uh, take it apart. Right, so let's get this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside. Now, initially it looks quite clean on there, but if you look into the actual grooves there now, can you see there's lots of bits of food and dust and dirt and stuff. So, uh, yeah, there you go, power cuts off. I, I wonder now, I wonder is this thing fixable or not? I wonder is it going to be dust? Right now I really think it might be just dust. Well, it's been a while since I've taken these apart, but from memory you have to start here and uh, start levering it all out. Also, I keep forgetting about the sink button, I've got to deal with the sink button. So right now, it's kind of weird. Happy but also slightly disappointed because I want to be able to fix it, but at least the sink button's not working, so it does need fixing. But it's just not that urgent because you can just use a USB to sync it up. Yeah, it's very dirty. Disgustingly dirty, actually. I'll pull it down here. It's, in fact, it's sticky. I'm going to put some gloves on. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Dirty. Right, I wonder if this sink button is actually doing anything. So we have to find out now is it the sink button that's not working, just a button, or is it something else which is forcing it to sink? And this was all definitely connected in here. This is a little sink button just here. You can buy these ribbon cables. It just means that you have to undo those kind of plastic welds here and the ribbon cable goes all the way wrong. But they're not expensive, I think they're about three or four pounds. I was going to say whether it's flux, but it's not. If you have a look down there, can you see there's staining? I think something's been spilt down here. If you have a look, one second, I'll just free my hands. If you have a look here, you can see sort of residue here, 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 and across this bit here. Also, can you see it looks ever so slightly? I mean, this could be just it could be just flux, but I don't think it is. Because if you look, it looks like it's slightly water damaged just down here across those pins. I think something's spilt down on top of here and also have a look down here. I'm wondering whether everything's just dried out. So maybe there was a problem with it. And uh, in the meantime now things have uh, things have things have dried. Oh god. Look at that. Where's all this stuff? Is that a raisin? It's a bit of wafer. Do you know what it looks like? It looks like an ice cream and it's all sticky. Do you reckon somebody rested an ice cream on top of it and it leaked? Seed here. Or is it a baklava? Maybe it's a baklava. Wow. Do you know, I don't think I've ever seen anything so dirty. Right, that's all going to need a massive scrub. Let's have a look at the bottom here. Yeah, look, there's definitely, that's definitely some sort of spillage, isn't it? Right, okay, so I've got that out there now. You can see a lot of marks here, but that's normal. I remember that on the first Xbox that I took off, and that's just the residue from the original flux. So you can see it's in a sort of pattern. 
So that's all uh, that's all actually uh, normal, but this bit here wouldn't be normal now. Can you see a little bit of green there? I don't think that would be normal. So uh, yeah, I think something's definitely fallen down on top of this board and maybe it was shorting on here or something when it was when it was wet. Could it be possible if this is the power board that maybe it was turning itself off through corrosion rather than actual recognizing when the finger touches the front i mean i really don't know but to be fair this bit here doesn't look too bad yes it's grimy but it's, it seems to be the top of the xbox that got the brunt of it rather than the bottom i mean if you compare that to that there's like uh, there's no comparison what we want to do is put in a tiny little flathead screwdriver in between the post and this bit here and then uh, just keep working its way around now this is actually too big let me Let me use one of these. I hope these don't break though. These might be too weak. Let's try that one. Of course, one, when one is off, the others come off easier then. They're off. There we go. Excellent. All right. Hopefully it should come off now. Brilliant. So now what I can do is I can... Oh, look, there is a fair bit of dust there, isn't there? But not enough to stop it from working. What I can do is I can clean up all that thermal paste and then put some new on. Uh, I am going to... Do you know I'm going to clean this board completely? This video is just going to be a whole load of cleaning. Basically, that's all I'm going to be doing, just cleaning absolutely everything and then putting it back together. As I said, I don't know if this is going to cure the problem, but right now there is no problem. And for the purpose of the video, I don't want to just sit and watch it for one or two hours until it shuts down. So let's do the cleaning because that might fix whatever the problem was. And then of course I can just uh, play it later on tonight and see if, it, uh, see if it cuts out or not. So I'm just going to be getting some IPA and I'm just going to be getting everything a really, really, really good clean. parts like this because I don't want to put this like under the shower I'm just gonna be cleaning this with, with a wet wipe you can see it's just so sticky and disgusting I mean even if you look at this the drive here this drive look at that I mean what is that stuff there absolutely horrible so all of these bits here are gonna be getting cleaned with a wet wipe and some paper towel but stuff like this here where there's just where it's just plastic and stuff like that I'm just gonna be putting that straight into a bath full of water yes it might have an impact on the stickers here but uh, this is going to take forever to clean otherwise. I think that's what I'm going to do anyway. Okay, now I'm going to put all this stuff into uh, the shower and get it nice and clean. Okay, about an hour has gone past now and everything is looking nice and clean again. Just need to remove this sticky bit a bit more here when it's put back together. So now we've got the process of putting it all back together and obviously I've got to apply the thermal paste as well. So I think I might as well do the thermal paste Paste now. Let's just give it one more clean with a bit of IPA. I've already got rid of all the old thermal paste. I'm happy that that's clean. I 
that so I can see the IPA evaporating off from there. And this is the paste that I'm going to be using. So let me zoom right in now so we can all have a nice argument about how much to use. Right, so I am going to try to use a tiny amount this time because I always get told that I use way too much. So let me just put on what I think is a tiny amount and then uh, we'll see what people have to say about this. Here we go. There. Okay. Now, if you have a look, there's hardly any depth to that at all. So surely, surely that there can't be too much. Now apparently with the thermal paste, all you want it there for is to basically level out if there's any slight differences. So ideally you would just want that against this, I believe. But because this isn't going to be perfect and there's going to be tiny little scrapes on there and there might be slight imperfections somewhere, the idea is for, is for the thermal paste to fill the gaps. So uh, yeah, hopefully it will do that. Okay, let's put it back on now. And let's do this X clamp again. Right, so I think that is on. Right, so that's in the groove there. That's in the groove there. In the groove. And lastly, yeah, that's in the groove as well. So that's going to be that's going to be okay. So now it's just a case of putting it all back together. Okay, so that is the main console put back together. I just want to have a look at this sync button now before I go much further. So to me, it looks like it is uh, it is pressing. I'm just going to trace the contacts and see where they go to. So they go on those two there. I wonder if I press it with my multimeter to pick up those little carbon tracks there. I've got somebody to press the button for me while I measured here, and I I couldn't feel it. Not 100% sure it is going to recognise it because these carbon tracks look a bit a bit iffy. But saying that, look, I'm pretty sure they does end up in copper there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel this off and see if I can find out what's the matter with this button. Because if it's not the button it must be the track but the track itself looks to be okay. Right just to prove the fault what I've done is I've used a front plate from a different Xbox. So we've still got the same old board here but just a different front plate. So in other words a different ribbon cable and as you can see now it is flashing and every time I press this button it makes that little popping noise. So it is definitely a problem with the ribbon cable off the other one. So I'm going to have another closer look at it and see if I can find out what's wrong. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just peeled off this part here. Because when I put my tweezers straight across to contacts here, the outer and inner, then it does make that popping noise. But now look, I've peeled this off and I've just re rearranged this ever so slightly, this little metal thing. And now if you listen, I don't know. There you go, hear that popping noise? So I'm going to put some tape on and see if this will fix it or not. No, see it's not popping now. So I'm going to have to keep working on this for a while. I've been messing around with this now for probably around about 20 minutes or longer and I can't get it to work consistently. So it will work in my fingers often, it will work when I put the tweezers across it, but then every time I tape it up again, it just uh, it stops working. So even if I get it to work here now, when I tape it up, it stops. So I'm thinking that this is just going to cause a load of hassle. Anyway, I'm not going to waste any more time with that, because it's still going to connect up with the USB uh, lead, and once the controllers are synced, how often do you need to press sync? And secondly, I can just order one of these from China for next to nothing, so it's not worth me spending an hour on this. Because I think even if I do get it working now, I think it will be an inconsistent fix. Yeah, you see, it's not doing it at all. Well, let's get this thing back together. Right, okay, that is it all finished, and it looks much cleaner than it did before. So I'm going to connect it up to the TV. I'm going to download a game and leave it on for a good hour or so and see 
if it holds out for that amount of time. Okay, so it's been on now for about half an hour. I fully downloaded that disc there. That went through fine. If you listen now, you can hear it's not overly noisy. And right now I've connected to the internet and it's just doing the update. I've also ordered myself up one of these cables here. Can you see here? For the Xbox One power button flex cable, it's coming from Hong Kong, so I've only paid 190. If I wanted to get it from the UK, I think it was about three pound. But you know what? I'm in no rush for this because it can just uh, sit there. This controller synced up fine. If I want to sync up more, you can use USB. It was only one pound 90, so nice and cheap. So I think what I'm going to do now is after the update goes through, I'm then going to download a digital game. So it's been about two and a half hours now. It's fully updated. I downloaded it, this no problem. I'm currently downloading Forza Horizon 4, but that's over 70 gigabytes. So that's probably gonna take the next four or five hours to do. Just to see if a digital game worked, I did download Metal Slug, which obviously only took a few minutes to download. And uh, yeah, this is uh, working absolutely fine. I think that this Xbox would have been working fine from the very start. I mean, it's nice that it's all clean now, but uh, I don't believe that cleaning it actually fixed the problem. It's just nice to have it clean. And obviously there was a lot of residue there with kind of honey residue or some kind of residue like that. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't fix it. The only thing that needs fixing is to do with the sync button now, which will easily be fixed when the part arrives from Hong Kong. So what a great buy. 28 pounds, one pound 90 from Hong Kong is still under 30 pounds, tiny bit of thermal paste and just a bit of elbow grease to clean it and a bit of IPA. It's running lovely and quiet now and there's barely any warmth to it either. I can just feel it warm just over this side here which is normal and you can hear how quiet it is. Yeah that just seems that just seems absolutely correct and as it should be so uh, yeah maybe when I start playing Forza Horizon 4 then when it's under load maybe it will start turning off and I've been messing around now with Forza Horizon 4 and it is working absolutely perfectly hasn't cut out once so as far as I'm concerned this Xbox is working really really well a result, a working Xbox for under £30. It just shows you sometimes you can get a bargain on eBay, which is still nice to know. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.